Hello friends, welcome to today's video of MATLAB Simulink. So, as we have already seen a basics of MATLAB in programming, so this is our home tab and here in home tab we can have a button for Simulink. So, while, after we click on this Simulink, we get a new window for the MATLAB Simulink. And after opening a Simulink window, you will be able to see this screen. So, in this particular uh, Simulink window, we have basics uh, tools like file as a opening and closing or new file uh, and also in edit we can have few options in view tab we have library browser model so these are many things which you can explore once you start to using the matlab thing in uh, display tab also we can manage the things which are available on the uh, front panel of the simulink window in simulation we can actually change the model configuration parameters so which actually used to perform the various algorithms to solve this particular simulations. So this is this thing is little important. So here we have solvers so we can change the start time and stop time. So this stop time is by default 10 when you open MATLAB simulating window and it also can be visible here which is 10 written here. So when we can change the stop time either from this tab or from, uh, going into the model parameters. So we have some solvers. So for basic solvers, uh, you need not require basic simulations. You need not require to change the solver. So keep it on auto and variable step only. So in Simulink window, you can actually uh, click on this Simulink library. So you can open a new Simulink library where multiple uh, options are available and you can track down the objects available in the Simulink library such as uh, sources or commonly used blocks or uh, some uh, electrical or mechanical related things. So everything is available in this particular Simulink library and you can open that particular folder and you can search out for the required parameter. You also can search in this uh, search tab for any particular item. So let's say we need to search this sine wave. So we can type down here sine wave. And it will search all the possible components which belongs to sine wave. So these are the sine wave components. So we can use this part, which we were able to use on the Simulink window. So to enter that particular component in Simulink, you can right click and then add to the model untitled. If you save the model by any name, it will appear like add to the add block to the model and your, the name of the file. So we can do this way or we can minimize this particular Simulink window. So this sine wave is appeared on in the untitled box. So we can use this for our simulation purpose. Now we have generated this sine wave. Let's let's try to use some amplification factor. So in commonly used blocks, let's try to take this particular block as a gain. So gain. So you can simply connect these particular two boxes likewise. And then let's try to have some scope. Scope is just like a meter or display. So it will give us opportunity to see what kind of 
uh, the waveform is about. So let's see in the sine wave. Uh, let's change amplitude 10. Frequency 50. So that will be fine. And don't ruin this particular wrap. So for 10, as sine frequency is 50 hertz, 100 millisecond will be uh, enough or let's say one second. So by, by clicking on this particular tab, we can simulate the circuit. So if there are no errors, it will simulate. And here you can see the simulation percentage. So it is it will compile first. And if there are errors, it will showcase us some errors. And if there are no errors, then it will start compiling. Now it has compiled and simulated. So we can double click on this particular scope and we can see the waveform. So this is your simulink window or uh, scope window we can say. So we are not able to see a proper scope or a proper sine wave here. So we need to change the step time. So now we need to go in model configuration parameters where we can change this variable step to fixed step and that fixed steps can be changed to zero point or we can say one e raised to minus six. So now see, as we have reduced the step time, we are able to see a perfect sinusoidal wave. So let's try to change. Uh, let's first see the amplitude. What is the amplitude? See here, it is 10 in the amplitude. So if we can amplify or multiply by this particular gain, let's say gain is to be two. So we expect that the 10, amplitude sine wave should get multiplied by 2 and it will be up to 20. So see now sine wave has increased to 20. In same way we can add some additional blocks so we can add a few things here let's say summing block and let's add some DC voltage as a constant So let's have a DC shift of 5 volts for a constant value. Now again, let's simulate. So earlier the waveform was sinusoidally uh, oscillating on 0. Now see the waveform is oscillating at some other value. So it is between now 30 to 10. Earlier it was 20 to 20. So you can see the difference is multiplied by uh, 10 because it is oscillating at 10. Why? Because we have added a shift of 5 and after that we are multiplying by 2. Suppose we have added this after the 2 multiplication so it would have been multiplied by the or in shifted to the 5 shifted by 5. So this was a small tutorial on Simulink window. You can actually see for a Simscape library for some electrical circuits like let me tell you So in Simscape, see here, in Simscape, you can actually see all the electronics and fundamental libraries, or you can simply search out for voltage source. So these are different voltage sources. So you can use this DC voltage source or this AC voltage source, and you can perform some basic uh, resistive or uh, 
resistive and AC voltage source uh, circuits, and you can see the waveforms for the small circuits like which you solved in basic electrical engineering. Try this and let me know if you have any queries. Thank you for watching video.